All right, people are joining us. If you're joining us right now, say hi in the chat. Let me know where you're from and how long do you know about us, acquisitions.com? How are you doing? Say hi in the chat. I'd love to see where you're from and how long do you know about us? That'll be super, super cool. And maybe even share with us um, what got you to this webinar, like what specifically attracted you to join us today and spend a very important hour or two of your life with me. I'd love to know that. We're gonna start in a minute or two. I just wanna make sure that everyone who uh, is here is gonna join and uh, be ready and we'll get started in exactly a minute or two. We prepared uh, an interesting training for you to make sure that you are prepared for what's coming in the market. So just say hi in the chat. Let me know where you're joining us from and how long do you know about us? And maybe what are you looking to learn today? Uh, California, Puerto Rico, nice, six months. Las Vegas, Randy. Atlanta, six, 12 months, nice. New York, ready to buy a lot of business with equity from the business, nice. Interesting in getting other people's views on the economy outlook for sure. You're definitely gonna learn some stuff today. Um, Anthony from Toronto, following the acquisition space for two years, nice. Did you do any acquisitions, Anthony? Hello from South Africa. Cool. Florida real estate broker. Nice one. San Diego. Uh, Victor from Arizona, Colorado. Michael, Matthew, North Carolina. Um, be ready to say, I want to learn how to take advantage of the recession to buy businesses. Yep, that's the goal today. What else? Give me some more answers, guys. I'm going to skip through some. Uh, from Germany, nice. Know about you. Almost three years. We want to do acquisitions. Love it. Full acquisition for the past two years. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Memphis. Looking to starting um, to effective next upcoming month at a younger age in Netflix. France. France and Singapore. I love it. We have international crowd here. That's freaking awesome. Um, Cool, 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 cool. All right, looking to find out how to put a million estate acquisitions of our luxury home. Okay, sweet, we'll get to all those questions. Stay with me until the end and we will um, answer any questions you have in the end of the presentation. So let me now go and share my screen. Uh, we prepared a bit of a training for you. Open the right screen here. Are you excited for this training? Last sip of water before I'm getting started. All right. Let's do it. So, the biggest market crash in our generation. And we're gonna show you today why it's the perfect storm of opportunities for acquisitions. All right, and obviously this is all for information purposes only. So here's the agenda for today, guys. We're gonna go through an introduction. We're gonna share with you what's a recession versus a market crash. What it means to us, to you, how to prepare for it. Opportunities for savvy entrepreneurs. Acquisitions.com as a buffer for you and Q&A. My promise to you for today is you're going to open your eyes on the current situation and market conditions. We're going to show you how to best prepare for the upcoming turmoil and how to find the best opportunities and come out of this mess on the right side. Is that something you want, hopefully? Like if, you, if there's going to be a recession, if there's a recession coming to us, you're probably going to be on the right, you want to be on the right side. So a bit about me, if you um, see me for the first time, um, I've been a military in the uh, Israeli Defense Forces. I own a portfolio of uh, 16 companies, mainly in the tech space. Founded, advised, sold, or played an integral role in the exits or acquisitions of over 150 companies at this point. Uh, the biggest one 
uh, partially the biggest one supported is it um, roll up in the let's just call it the online space that is now doing more than 200 million in revenues which uh, took less than two years to build right so yeah invested in dozens of companies that are abd assets and we kicks um, our venture fund that um, i was part of and i was published in prominent magazines and now i'm the founder and ceo of acquisitions.com i have a youtube channel that i highly suggest you to check if you didn't there's tons of free content in there in fact hundreds of videos to give you a lot of um, lessons on business and acquisitions so what acquisitions.com what do we do we basically help you find great deals finance them putting in front of investors and institutions and of course then to close the deal and operate great businesses so i don't care what's your experience you know we can really really help you to become an expert when it comes to buying businesses and growing businesses one deal at a time versus one client at a time and yeah we really save you tons of time money and effort in the process um just based on stuff that i like if i had the opportunity to learn what i share with our clients today i would have many many more millions and probably saved would have saved a lot of millions of uh, mistakes. So yeah, if you want to learn more about that, go to acquisitions.com forward slash apply and feel free to book a free call with us to see um, how we can help you. Back to our agenda for today. So how did we end up in this mess of the upcoming uh, recession that we, or potentially some would say we are already in a recession, right? So it starts with quantitative easing do you know let me know in the chat if you know what it is but basically during the covid pandemic government printed ungodly amount of money creating a massive inflation and distortion in the markets right that's not fun when government is basically telling you hey we're going to print tons of money we're devaluing your you know the value of your dollars and it's not cool right whatever costed a dollar yesterday now cost dollar point five Guess what? If your income is the same, it's not fun. Interest rates. Artificially low interest rates might look good and boost markets in the short term. The truth is that cheap money, misaligned incentives for companies which buy back shares instead of creating the value, therefore creating massive bubbles. Right? It's a huge, huge interest rate. People don't understand how interest rate affects the economy. And that's why we're always looking to see what the interest rate changes are. And then policies, right? Government handouts create complacency of the working class who don't want to work for wages and prefer to live on subsidies. Uh, the mental shift in the society happened leading to shifted in consumer behavior and politics, right? Here's the thing. When the government gives you free money, most people don't work. Most people in the world work. And let me know in the chat if that's you. Do you work because you have to or do you work because you want to? Um, and unfortunately, most people in the work in the world will work in jobs because they have to. They have to provide. They have to, you know, support their families. So when the governments decide to give them free money, doing nothing, do you think it makes them more lazy or less lazy? Right. So that definitely isn't helping. And even Elon Musk is talking about it. Right. So on Twitter thread, um, people are asking him, do you think we're approaching a recession and he's saying yes but this is actually a good thing it has been raining money on fools for too long some bankruptcies need to happen also all the covid stay-at-home stuff has tricked people into thinking that you don't actually need to work hard rude awakening inbound so here's the thing right when money is cheap companies are raising tons of capital they hire tons of people and even if the overall business is not the best and the basic fundamentals of the business are not the best, as long as there's access to capital, they can always go back and raise more capital and hire more people. But when money is not that cheap, when they need to pay more on their capital, the game is not that easy, right? And Elon here is even saying that, yeah, the idea that everyone is working from home, I mean, you know, it makes people think like, okay, I'll, I'll just stay at home. I won't work that hard. What about you, by the way? Let me know in the chat. Do you work from home or are you back in the office? And what do you think? What is better? And is even, you know, 
obviously almost declaring a war on the remote work thing, right? So he's saying the office must be a main Tesla office, not a remote branch office, unrelated to job duties, for example, being responsible for manufacturing human relations, but having your office be in another state. Um, I think that there's a letter that he sent that he basically said, if you want to work from home, that's only in addition to 40 hours that you'll work in the office. But if you're not going to work at least 40 hours in the office, you can just leave. So it just shows you uh, probably um, one, if not the best entrepreneur in the world at this point is very much against it because he feels like it created an environment of lazy people which obviously isn't helping for the economy. Um, and some of you might be familiar with uh, the big short investor, Michael Berry. Uh, he warns of looming consumer recession. Did you watch the, there's a great movie, by the way, by the name of Big Short. So it's been played by, oh man, I'm so bad at names. Uh, the guy who played Batman, probably the best Batman. But um, yeah, so he's talking about it as well. He warns the US economy, uh, he's on board time and said consumers will blow through their savings in a matter of months, right? So if one of those guys, a guy like that is, you know, forecasting a bad situation, we need to open our eyes and be ready because this guy is not playing around. That's how he's making his money. Even Carl Icahn. Are you familiar with Carl Icahn? Let me know in the chat. Also, multi-billionaire says that very well could be a recession or even worse. And yeah, that was in March. So it looks like he's, he's right. So should you be concerned, right? Here's the thing. Look, 75% of Fortune 500 CEOs said that they are bracing for a recession. So what do you think? If 75% of basically the best businesses in the world are bracing for a recession, what do you think? Also, so many businesses stopped hiring or already started letting go of employees. It means that people are prepared. It means that money is not that cheap anymore. And it's an anticipation game. What's going to happen next? You know, and what are you doing to prepare? You personally right now, what is your plan? Do you have a plan on how to make the most out of it? And at least how to protect yourself as much as possible. A lot of it is an emotional game as well, right? When your portfolio is going down 20, 30, 50% or more, some companies went down now like 80, 90% from their peaks. It's not fun. So what are you doing? What's your plan? And in general, what happens during the recession? A lot of companies just default and go uh, you know, through bankruptcy. Unemployed meant raises. It's harder to borrow money. Consumer spending decreases, which obviously affects the economy. If people are not buying products, it affects businesses, which affect the economy. Uh, stock market goes down. That's not fun. Um, you know, if you have a portfolio, even if it's a, a simple index fund and you see it goes down, even if it's in the short term, it's not fun. And most investors are not that smart, sophisticated, and logical enough to not make rush decision when they see the portfolio go down. What about you? Tell me in the chat, if you have capital in the markets, how did you react in the last in like a few weeks. So let's talk a bit about why recessions are a good thing for us. Well, first of all, it allows bad companies to fail, which creating a space for more innovative and efficient uh, entrance. Um, starts a decade or so of growth, like after a recession, it means we can only go up. It means that there's no more overpriced talent. People are just going back to me being more realistic on what they worth what their businesses are worth um, access to talent previously unavailable because a lot of people just losing their jobs and are open to look at other opportunities and when it comes to what we're doing here with acquisitions.com it means more or tons of motivated sellers for acquisitions like tons so what's happening today inflation hits 40-year record high at 8.5%. Gas prices jumped 48% year over year. That's not fun for the everyday um, Joe. 
Rental rates have increased for eight consecutive months. The average rent for a two-bedroom apartment in the U.S. is now $2,000, up from $1,600 last year. Groceries are up 10% year over year. That's insane. For the average guy to see his numbers are going so high, and at the same time, salary stays the same, it's, it's not easy, right? What, what do you think? Tell, tell me in the chat if you experience something like that where maybe you have a job or you take a specific amount of money from your business and now you see that everything just seems to be more expensive. And yeah, just, you know, look at the S&P performance year to date, not so fun. So how bad it's going to get? So you need to keep in mind a lot of face success, things like Bitcoin, real estate, bad real estate deals, tech bubbles, um, political uncertainty, obviously the war in Ukraine, that's affecting things, midterms in the US, the Middle East, inflation, small businesses still recovering after COVID. And a lot of small businesses are still living and surviving on the money that they received from governments. Right, they got access to capital. A lot of them are kind of like living on that. We might experience the dot com bubble combined with 2008. Um, anyone here was part of um, one of those eras? That'll be interesting to see. Uh, what did you experience back then, and how are you going to learn from those? Um, you know, from history, basically, because the further backward you can look the further forward you can see by Winston Churchill right the more you learn about history the more you can not necessarily predict the future no one have a crystal ball but we can at least anticipate a bit better on how to prepare and how to protect ourselves so why is it a good time for acquisitions first of all last competition better terms and prices for motivated sellers they don't want to deal with another recession and they're just super motivated to sell in a recession. Uh, less risk compared to startup. Obviously buying a business is less risky than starting a business from scratch, especially in a recession because you have existing revenues, profits, team members, not necessarily going to be easy to finance that in a startup right away. Access to talent and market prices, better rates from vendors, right? You can negotiate things much better. You can choose recession-proof industries, of course. There are some companies that, or services that are always going to have a demand. And if you can really find those great deals, that can be a huge opportunity. And in the end of the day, there will always be demand for good services and products. So how to come out of this on the right side? Uh, first of all, you got to anticipate market moves. You need to increase your risk tolerance, right? And... I mean, this is time to be aggressive. If you had or have money on the sideline, this is the time for you to start playing the game. If you're not playing the game now, I don't know when you're going to play the game. Like at some point, you just got to tell yourself, hey, you know what? I got to jump into the water. I got to make a decision that this is my time. At some point, if you want to make more out of yourself, you got to make that decision. And there's never been a better time to do that. Like now. Also, you need to understand that cash is king. Cash allows you to take advantage of opportunities when they arise. Cash and cash flow, that's what you need to focus on. Do you have cash? Can you invest in yourself? Can you invest in a business? Can you find great deals? What can you do to protect yourself? You need to avoid major bad real estate deals. You want to have a serious business plan in place and you want to execute on it, but this is time to execute. You want to improve yourself daily. Because people will notice you in times like this. When the market is going crazy, people are looking for talented people to buy their businesses, to join as an employee. And yeah, you want to monetize fear. Many people will be willing to listen at this point. Because the lazy, the arrogant, they will be filtered out now faster than ever. It's no time for ego. This is time to improve yourself, you know, and learn how to become better as part of a team in a business that you're buying or maybe a business that you're joining, like in a consulting for equity type deal. 
Um, commit and do it. The market is desperate for leaders. So I just want to check the chat. How do you feel about things so far? I just want to see if there are any uh, major notes here. Okay, I see some people here. Lost 500,000. Wow. To get up the race race. Recessions are the best time to buy businesses because prices go down. Exactly. 100%. Christian Bale. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move to the next one. So how to come out of this on the right side? Um, it starts with joining a community of winners who are moving industries. You know, you got to find strength in numbers, be useful and serve others. You got to create a vision for your company and get people behind you. If your vision is not big enough, you want to attract people to join you. As simple as that. You got to cut the fat. Anything that isn't productive, isn't good. People, tools, processes, anything like that. You want to double down on positive instructions. You want to lead your team with example, be the example, lead from the front. And you want to increase your level of urgency. Don't move slowly. Whatever you can do today, do today. Don't, you know, don't schedule it for a week or a month from now or next year. I'll do it next year. I'll start to buy businesses next year. Well, guess what? Next year, you might not have great deals like you have now. You might not have access to cash like you have now or access to investors who still have cash they're willing to deploy. And in a year from now, might be a mess to deploy. All right? Same with financial institutions and whatnot. And you don't want to go about it alone. Look for mentors, peers. Get the numbers in. It's all about reps. Find the thing you want to focus on. If it's buying businesses, learn the process and work on it every single day. And I think this is the time to think about a roll-up. You know, this is a time to really think about bold moves. We decided with acquisitions.com, we're probably going to, not probably, but we're going to work on a roll-up in the marketing space. We just started announcing it a few weeks ago. We already have $150 million in our pipeline of revenues. We sent three LOIs. I believe this is a great opportunity for everyone to be super, super involved. And a roll-up strategy for those who uh, don't know is basically the process of acquiring and merging multiple smaller companies in the same industry and consolidating them into a large company, right? So you basically combine a few small firms, you buy a few of them into a larger company, uh, which allows you to pull their resources together, cut down on operational costs and increase revenues. And then that's where you can buy companies at two times, three times multiples of their profits, put them together, and then eventually sell it for six times, seven times, 10 times of the profits and create an amazing arbitrage for yourself, your investors, and everyone involved in your deal. Um, anyone heard about this guy? When um, he was Zynga, the waste management guy. He's Zynga. Or... He started a roll up at the age of 25 with $5,000 to his name. Anyone here um, have more than $5,000? Because this guy built it in times of economic uncertainty in the 70s. And he acquired hundreds of independent small-time um, holders uh, and complementary companies. And eventually became a Fortune 500 companies, 15 billion in revenues um, in 2020, coming from a super humble background without a business degree. So if you started with $5,000 and you have that amount or more, then you're starting in a better place. So no reason for you not to believe in yourself that it's possible for you to do that as well if you have the right skills, resources, tools, um, and, and process to follow. And there are countless examples of roll-ups. So is there just one? Um, you can start with your local businesses. You can merge two or three companies that can generate tremendous value for you and your company and your family. And in the other day, if you want to be a net worth millionaire, you're only one deal away from doing that, like one good deal away. You don't need to know how to or have a background in finance or management or whatnot, because you can find great team members in those businesses, great processes and managers to help you. So all you need to become good at is becoming a great deal maker. Someone is out there knowing where to find the best deals, how to analyze them, if it's a good deal or not, and how to get access to capital. And of course, then how to lead your team and incentivize them. 
Um, and here's the thing with acquisitions, it's just much easier to find capital for acquisitions of companies that already do revenues, profits versus startups. And there are so many no money down structures that um, we work with people in our accelerator. We have dozens of ways where you can get access to capital to help you close on those deals. So it doesn't necessarily need to come from your pocket. And sellers approaching retirement will be super motivated due to uh, the uncertainty that we have in the market. So you want to make the most out of it, guys. Like at some point, you got to make a decision. Who do you want to be? Put yourself in that shoes. Imagine yourself in five, 10 years from now. Who do you want to be there? And then ask yourself, what actions would that person make? Who that person need to learn from? What actions that person need to take every day? What mindset that person needs to have? And start to work on that every single day. Because at some point, if you want to do that today, you'll find yourself in a year from now, basically having regrets on what you could have done. In a year from now, you could be the owner of at least one multi-million dollar company that you bought, or you could just stay the same. So the question is, are you willing to settle for doing it? Like, let me ask you this. If, if we're able to get you to your goals of owning a company or few of them, like we work with a guy that's doing 200 million a year in revenues. If we helped you there, if you helped you get there in half the time, would you be willing to settle to do it in one, three, five, ten 10 years longer? You think it's worth it? I think the biggest thing that I appreciate the more I grow as a person is time. And if you're not appreciative of your time, hopefully one day life will slap you in the face and remind you that time is the most precious thing you have. And what we're doing here is we're buying time. We're showing you things that, like I said, would save me millions of dollars and make me millions more of dollars. Let's do this. That's so we're recording. Jason. Hey everyone. So we got Jason here. I'm super excited to talk to him because Jason, well, how many deals did you do already? Uh, I've done five so far. Five. Amazing. Man. So let's now take a few steps back, right? What did you do before you ever got into the space of buying businesses? Well, I worked for um, over 20 years as a project manager and general manager at a small remodeling company. So that, that's been my background has been in construction. And, um, and that's what I started doing for acquisition as well, because I really like that field because I, I wanted to make some changes to really grow and expand and kind of push myself to really do what I'm capable of doing. How do you manage five businesses at the same time? Um, I didn't know how to do it at first. I just started doing it. <laughs> and uh, the first year was a lot of extra work, um, but I, I learned a lot from that. And since I was willing to just persevere and push through the, the things that would stop a lot of people. How, how do you feel that you have, have you changed from the experience of buying businesses do you feel like it changed you as a as a person as well in addition to what you learn yeah. in the process oh yeah i'm a lot happier for one yeah. um, because i'm really on something that i really enjoy doing and um and I'm, I'm overcoming barriers and things that uh you know could be daunting but uh overcoming those things is what kind of gives me happiness and uh, it's had a lot of success, um, you know, income wise. And of course, that's always, you know, always makes you happy, make lots of money. But uh, just the, the demonstration to myself um, of my ability to actually accomplish these things is very satisfying. And, uh, you know, it's just, it just, you know, I don't know, it, it kind of, uh, it breeds that kind of a building of momentum on these things. So I feel like I can take on more and more and more and bigger things. So my confidence has gone way up. Uh, my happiness has gone way up. I'm making a heck of a lot more money than I ever made before. And, uh, and I have a lot of great staff and I've got a lot of great jobs for, you know, you know, over 75 people now. Not too bad. Huh? Yeah. You acquired since it's like eight businesses. 
that's how fast your life can change. You did it, what, in like a year or something. Um, and yeah, if you think Jason is unique, I don't know, like we have Boris Love. That's probably one of the stories that I'm the most proud of. Like, if you look at this post, um, English is not his first language. He can barely speak English with people understanding him. He was a truck driver in the US with no experience. Um, he didn't have a, he didn't even have a social security number. He had, then he created, um, he got one like a ITIN thing. He had a very bad credit score, uh, but he bought a business doing 13 million a year following our process with zero money out of pocket, zero, nada, garnished. Not too bad. What would you do with a business doing 13 million a year? And we have tons more stories like that, guys. We have Luis here, 20 years old, who closed like a second deal. Adam who closed like five deals, uh, 63 million raised. Um, tons here. Like, and obviously, we don't have place. We have hundreds of those that I could probably spend an hour just going through our case studies. So if you feel like you want to get similar results, you want to make to point where get to a point where we're buying seven, eight businesses or just one like Boris Lowe or 16 like Michael is doing 200 million a year with his roll-up. We can help you. Go to acquisitions.com forward slash apply. This is how we're helping you. So you get in a full support and mentorship. You'll have an opportunity to talk to me weekly, right? Plus an access to the team to help you. You'll have your own personal account manager and access to our expertise um, from our team. You'll get a step-by-step -step training. So comprehensive business training, tons of valuation tools and deal structures like we had business owners bankers who come into us and telling us hey that in itself worth like fifty thousand dollars just the tools and modules that we created you'll get our process on how to do everything how to find deals analyze deals use other people's money to close deal how to then incentivize the team to help you operate the businesses when it comes to finding deals and sourcing them we'll show you how to use our network for deals and capital and how to use our processes for off-market deals, right? We'll show you our systems, our processes, automated methods, everything you need. We created proprietary systems and processes to get you dozens of off-market opportunities every single week. That's what we do. And you could use the same process. Like, we have a great community. We have a community of people who are owning seven, eight, and nine figure businesses, and people are just getting started. So everyone is helping each other. You can have your own accountability groups, your own local meetups with those different groups. Lots of things we can do. Uh, funding. So we'll not just give you access to Rolex of financial institutions that we uh, know with their direct contacts and even introductions to some of them, personal introductions, like a red carpet introduction. But you'll also have an opportunity to pitch your deal to our fund. And if we decide to invest in you, we'll even refund our service fee. So it's basically you just putting some kind of a skin in the game deposit to learn everything. Um, and then our goal is to partner with you, right? And buy tons of businesses with you. But who it's for, guys, you gotta be committed, coachable, resourceful. And I want good people. I don't want to work with assholes. I'm at a point in my life that I decided that I just want good vibes around me. And everyone will look at things differently. But let's just say this. We don't want to work with assholes, right? We want people who want to do good things, grow great businesses. Uh, because eventually, my goal is to work with you, to partner with you. And I want to talk to you and not just work with you for the next one, three, five, 10 months, 12 months, but potentially work with you for the next one, three, five, 10, 20 years as a partner. Those are the real people I want here. People are looking for help to find great deals, looking for help to analyze those deals and know if they're good or not, and looking for help to get access to capital. And then potentially supporting them post deal if we're becoming their partners, but it's not a must. A lot of our clients are just doing deals on their own. It's just your decision. If you, for some reason, can access the capital on your own, you could use our network um, and really, really accelerate your, um, your progress. So with that being said, um, I will open things up to questions. So just 
type your questions in the Q&A box in Zoom. Um, and remember, even if you're not sure, if you're still with me on the call, I highly suggest you go to acquisitions.com forward slash apply, put your details in there. You got nothing to lose. Worst case scenario, you know, you'll end up with another million dollar business that you own and takes, you know, potentially passive um, income from it, get great cash flow, protect yourself um, from the recession. Um, and not just that, but build yourself, build yourself to um, places that probably none of us had this opportunity in the last at least 10 years. So if you want to make the next 10 years your best, make the best use of it. Go to acquisitions.com forward slash apply, fill in information, book a call with us, and let's see where you're at, where you want to be, and if and how we can help you. All right, with that being said, <clears throat> I'll um, go to the chat. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. All right. Um, I see a message here from Matthew. What I learned about buying a business in 2008 is don't be afraid of a recession. Exactly. If you have the right skill set of how to buy businesses that will uh, give you cash flow and cash, uh, then you don't need to be afraid. You actually need to be excited because that's the best opportunity to, you know, to, to really find those great deals. Cash is definitely king right now, 100%. Cash and cash flow, right? Cash is only good to some extent. Until you don't have cash, then you need cash flow, which is an ongoing income stream that comes from great businesses that you can buy. We need this information. Thank you, Moran. Thank you, RT. I appreciate it. Uh, now's the time to be barbarians at the gate, Eddie, 100%. Uh, there's never been a better time to bet on yourself, guys. Is seller financing easier to do uh, to get during recession? Yeah, I mean, all deals are, are easier during recession because people are just more motivated. <clears throat> so what you're saying, the seventies were trash. Um, I don't know. I didn't leave them. Uh, Steven, I just closed a deal. Steven is actually one of our. Um, community members with 3% of EVS fresh equity. The rest was financed through the equivalent of an SBA small loan, cash out and seller financing. Nice. Owner took the 40% as seller financing. Owner was worried about getting out, retiring, recession that was looming. He was motivated and we were able to close the deal also on the um, TSC of seller loans. The terms were very favorable. Love it. That's amazing. We need to screenshot that, uh, Martin and Angela, if you see that. This is beautiful. I'm going to do that right now. Steven, thank you for pointing that out. That's awesome. Um, Gregory is saying, is it easier to sell motivated cap is a tax break, not less tax, but taxes spread out over time with payments? I just want to make sure I understand your question with taxes spread out. Yeah, so with taxes, I mean, there are different ways to structure deals where they are favorable um, for the seller when it comes to taxes. Um, yeah, so you can definitely do that. Uh, banks lend the most money last quarter of the year. Yep. Uh, be rich. Seller financing will be tough to get in a recession. The seller needs cash up front for sure. You may get lucky, but you'll need to knock on thousand doors first. Well, here's the thing. You don't know what you don't know. And I would be careful from those beliefs, Biresh. Right? Be careful from the beliefs and words you put out there because your thoughts becomes your words. Your words becomes your actions. Your actions become your results. So I would just say be careful from having too much of a belief like that. Are banks open to loaning more during a recession or they're afraid? Banks, remember how banks make money. They're making money by loaning money. So they will need to lend money. Is it going to be to you? It depends. Do you know how to position yourself in front of them? Do you know how to talk to them? Do you know how to uh, position your deal as a great deal and yourself as a great entrepreneur that is credible? That's what it comes down to. 
how do you combine ownership of intellectual property with acquisitions if you're trying to build your own empire? Um, it's, you know, IP is part of an asset that you're buying with a business. And if it's meaningful and important for the business, you definitely want a part, um, part of it. You know, like you definitely want it as part of the deal. The last quarter is the best time to get money from lenders. They want their Christmas bonus. <laughs> yeah. Luna, thank you, Moran. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Thank you. Thank you. As a current military personnel, is it something I can do and be successful at it? Remy, um, I don't know what you do in the military, but if you are coming back in weekends, um, then you can definitely find a deal that uh, will support you if you find the right one with the right management team in place or with enough cash flow to support a management team in place. So my question is, it depends. In the end of the day, you'll need to put at least one or two hours a day into this to be able to take action towards getting those results. And after that, yeah, if, if, if you can, let me, let me tell you this, if you can put one or two hours a day of work and it can be remotely as well, uh, no matter where you, you, you're at, uh, then it's definitely doable. Um, how it's set up, fees, et cetera, so we know ahead of time. It depends. So we have a few ways of working with us. Luna, I suggest you book a call, a short call, and we'll see where you're at and where you want to be because some people just want to be taught and learn and get the education, and some people want more of our ongoing support. So it can be a few thousand dollars up to, you know, fifty, hundred thousand dollars if you want more access, more support, almost like an investment banking uh, type level support when you really want us to go out there and find the deals for you. You really want us to do the work for you and bring you all the capital. So it really depends on the level of support that you want. That's why I suggest book a call and we'll see where you're at, where you want to be and see what we think is, is best fit for you. It's not, you know, we're not going to sell you something that we, we don't think makes sense to you. Is it possible to buy businesses in a different country? Uh, Stevie, the answer is yes. Um, at my peak, I had businesses in the in Israel, UK, US, Canada, Australia, Cyprus, and Panama. And I can only be at one country at a time. So yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, timing is mega important. Yep. Uh, the link to book a call isn't working on the website. Um, we will check it out. Thank you. Uh, can no money done work in the healthcare industry? Yes, it can work in any industry, any country. If you have businesses in your country and you have banks in your country, um, deals um, should work. Cash is key, however, where is the place to park your cash? In 2008, the Canadian government made change to the Bank um, Act that will allow uh, for banks' bills in, meaning if things get back, they will be able to take your money. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's the tricky part about uh, putting cash in, let's say putting all your cash in one place, that's risky. That's why I think owning a business that you control that provides cash flow for you, no one can take it away for you, from you. If you have a good product, good service that the market needs, you will always have access to cash flow, right? And the returns you can get when it comes to even putting your money into business acquisitions, it's unlike any return you can get anywhere else. Like compared to the S&P or real estate, you just can't get those returns compared to small business. And the beauty is that with small business, um, not only that, it obviously depends on the deal, but the returns are just much higher on average, but it's also that you're much more in control. When you're putting your money in the S&P, in the index fund, in the stock market, can you really do anything? Can you really control things? When you put in all your money in Tesla, for example, can you really control what Elon Musk is going to do tomorrow? When you put in all your money in Bitcoin tomorrow, can you really control what Bitcoin is going to do tomorrow? No. But when you're a business owner, you can control things at least much more because you can improve the business. You can improve the product. You can have better services, better marketing, better sales, hire a better team, right? So things that you just can't do in a lot of other asset classes. Plus the returns initially without even making those changes usually is much higher than all those other assets class, asset classes. So it's either a great return for you as the investor or great returns for an investor that you'll bring from the outside. That's the way to look at it. 
any tips on how to build credibility when you're just starting out? Um, first of all, learn the right words that you need to use when it comes to talking to business owners and banks and investors. So learn the language. For, I'd say, 80 90% of people in our program, it's enough. But then if you feel still feel like you need more confidence, you can always partner with people. Like in our community, you can always partner with like someone like Jason who already bought eight businesses. Guess what? That's going to give you a lot of certainty and confidence um, and credibility right away. And he's happy. Um, and a lot of our community members are happy to do that because they want to do more deals. I currently can afford the program with my salary, but I'm fully committed and want to work with you at some point. I'm at point A, B, show me how to get to a Z. Um, yeah, RT, big son. I mean, so... First of all, I would tell you about a belief like that. And I think it's a good lesson for everyone. When you say I can't afford it, ask yourself, what can I do to afford this? Because if you were in jail, and let me know anyone here, if you were in jail right now and you had to pay a few thousand dollars to bail yourself out, would you be able to find the money? All right, or let me share with you another story. If I told you right now, hey, Artie, I have a Ferrari right now that's sitting in my garage. It's worth a million dollars, but I got to sell it to you um, in the next week because I need to liquidate all my assets. I need to leave the country as soon as possible. And I'll sell it to you for um, $200,000. Actually, I'll give you the next two months to do that. But I'll give you my car for $200,000 that cost that, that's worth a million on paper. Plus, actually, I have a friend who's coming here in a year from now, and he's going to buy the car from you for $900,000. So you could make $700,000 in the next year if you could come up with $200,000 in the next um, 60 days. Would you be able to come up with ideas on how to get his money or do whatever it takes to get the money? And working is, out, is not even costing you 5 10% of that. But... Your answer should be for something like that, that you'll do whatever it takes. Like you need to tell yourself, hey, I'll go to anyone in the street and tell him about this deal. I'll talk to random friends, family, people in the street and tell them, look, I can do those acquisitions. Support me, sponsor me, and I'll give you 10% of my deal, 20% of my deal, right? Or I'll give you, I'll return you back the money as soon as I buy the business with 15% interest. That's much better that they're, they're getting in the um, index funds right now. Um, she said, okay, sounds like an opportunity in the beginning. How are you earning income as you put deals together and on what scale? Um, you earning an income when you're the owner of the business. Until then, you need to find yourself somehow, but you don't have a lot of expenses when it comes to going through the process of buying a business you don't have pretty much other than like travel that you don't really have to do right now and maybe a few softwares that you can use for like premium linkedin and whatnot or email softwares you don't really have costs peter how to control a company with a minority interest we have a difficulty situation in south africa called be in the black economic environment must Empowerment shareholder must have at least 51% of, yeah, so it comes down to the clauses you have in the agreement. Um, that's probably a whole two-hour conversation I can have, but it comes down to the legal clauses that you need to have in the agreement to control the business even as a minority um, owner. Jesus, thanks, Maran. I'm looking forward to working with the acquisitions family. Awesome, and looking forward to support you as much as I can. I'm willing to take the laser, laser cut, laser cut to push towards my goals. I love it. Yeah, and Devin just wrote his email, devin.m at acquisition.com if you uh, need help to book a call. Thanks, Maran. Very useful info and we'll book a call. Awesome. I'll quit my job and pull down my 401k for this. Thank you. Uh, reaching back to Devin. Yeah, guys, I mean, it comes down to at some point you need to think about your upside versus your potential downside like you know if you're going to join us the worst case that's going to happen is going to just going to stay where you're at 
And the problem is that most of you are not concerned with what life is going to look like of staying where you're at. At some point, you got to push things. You just got to push and tell yourself, that's where I want to be. And I'll do whatever it takes to get there. Do you have operations and management methods for once the business has been acquired? Yeah, we'll definitely support you there on how to operate the business, set different processes and systems to make sure that you and your team know how to um, operate the business, sustain it and grow it 100%. Um, cool, so I don't see any more questions. Hopefully the training today was useful. Um, remember, go to acquisitions.com for us slash apply um, to book a call with us. Do these systems keep the owner name of the organizational charts? Yeah, they will definitely show you how to do that if you don't want to be in the org chart at all. Uh, what do I need to do? A merger acquisition. Can I save this Zoom? Yeah, we'll send it a recording. Um, we'll send it a recording to the email list. So uh, be on the lookout for an email. Uh, in terms of Hugo, what do you need to do? emerging or acquisition, I suggest go to acquisitions.com, put the email there um, and start watching the training there and then book a call with us. And that will show you kind of the first step. We'll give you the high level um, steps of what you need to do. All right, everyone, I appreciate you all. I wish you all a great rest of your week and hopefully you got some value today. And um, yeah, take care and um, have a good one. Bye-bye. Oh, I love seeing all those things. Thank you, guys. All right, take care. Enjoy.